So obviously we're fans of all things Mustang here at CJ Pony Parts, but we definitely have a soft spot for the classics. Like I've said many times, there's nothing like cruising around in a car that was built decades earlier. There's just the style and nostalgia that's part of owning a classic Mustang. So you go to car shows, you see these cars all over the place, you watch them on TV, hopefully you watch some of our videos, and you decided, hey, you know what? I want a classic Mustang for myself. And when I talk about buying a classic Mustang, I always say, buy the nicest car you can afford. It's a lot easier to buy a nicely finished car than to buy a project and build it. But no, you've decided that, you know what? You want the entire experience and you're gonna restore a Mustang. Now, you've watched it on TV, you've seen guys do it in a couple days, you know, how hard can it really be? Well, there's a lot more to it than you actually think there's going to be. So right now, we're gonna discuss five things you really should consider before you decide if you wanna restore a classic Mustang. So the first thing to talk about is your skill set and recognizing what you can and can't do. And that seems easy, but it really isn't. I've seen so many restorations over the years that people just bite off more than they can chew and the car never gets done. Now remember, when you're watching a YouTube video, you're watching a TV show, we have this magical thing called editing that makes everything look way, way easier than it actually is going to be. Now, while YouTubers are guilty of this, TV shows make it a thousand percent worse. Now, trust me, they did not repair all that rust, hang two quarter panels, a door and a fender in 30 minutes. It's just not possible. But again, the videos will make it seem easier than it actually is. So again, remember, restoring a Mustang is a monumental task. It's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of money to do so, and also gonna take a lot of skill to do so. And the less skill you have, the more the second part is really gonna come into the equation. The next thing you wanna consider is money, because it's gonna take a lot of it to restore a classic Mustang. And the more work you do yourself, you'll save money, but the more work you farm out, it's going to cost you money. And in the end, restoring a Mustang can cost as much as a brand new Shelby, so there's gonna be a lot of money to it. You also, once you figure out a budget, you wanna to try to stick to it, even though it's not gonna be easy, because classic cars are 40, 50 years old, almost 60 years old in some cases, they're gonna hide secrets. So when you come up with that budget in your head and you've looked at all the parts you want, first thing you wanna do, pretty much double it. Assume that's a good starting point for what the restoration is gonna cost. So again, there's a lot of money involved, there's also a lot of time. So obviously the most natural thing to come after money is gonna be time because after all, time is money. But keep in mind, it takes a lot of time to do a restoration. I mean, you watch these TV shows, they restore a car in a week or restore it in five or 10 episodes. That's not realistic. You know, most professionals, if you drop your car off at a shop, they're gonna have your Mustang year, year and a half, even two years, even more. Depends how in-depth the restoration is gonna get. So there's a lot of time involved in the process. And you wanna make sure that you have that time available. You know, if you think I've got six months to work on my car and then I'm changing jobs, moving, being deployed, whatever, well, a restoration's probably not for you. And also, if you're really excited and you can't wait to drive your Mustang, Again, then it's when you wanna look at a car that might be already finished and tweak it yourself. I mean, I've seen cars end up in paint jail for two and three years sometimes. So again, if you're trying to do a ground up restoration and you're gonna farm some of that work out, you definitely wanna plan for it to be a multi-year process. All right, so number four, we're gonna say you understand your skills, you've got some time, you've got some money put aside. Do you have a place to do it? Do you have the right garage, the right space, and the right tools to do the job? You gotta keep in mind, like we said, this can be a multi-year process. So do you have a place to put this car while you work on it that it can sit there for a couple years? You know, is it okay to put, you know, the wife, the husband's car outside while your restoration project comes inside for two, three, who knows how many years? You also wanna make sure it's a clean, dry space with room to work. You know, we've seen plenty of really, really beautiful restorations come out of a one bay garage, but that's extremely challenging. You wanna assume a two car garage is gonna be about the minimum. You want one bay to keep the car in and another bay to assemble, work, disassemble, store parts, whatever. So again, before you dive into a restoration project, you wanna make sure you have a good place to do it. You also gotta make sure you have the right tools. Now, if you have your, you know, my Craftsman 100 piece mechanics tool set, not really what you need to do a restoration. And we've done plenty of videos here on garage essentials and toolbox essentials. You know, make sure you've got a well-rounded toolbox with the right tools. Obviously there's plenty of specialty tools and stuff like that, and you can rent things like that. But again, you wanna have a decent, solid collection of tools before you even get started. So the last thing on my list, and probably the most important, is before you invest your time, your money, find the space, find everything, 
make sure it's actually what you really want. You know, a lot of people see a classic car, think, wow, that's beautiful, and don't understand what a classic car is. You know, drive them. You've got to have a friend who has one. There's places you can even rent them these days, but get behind the wheel of a classic so you get a feel for how a classic operates. Remember, this is 50 year old technology in a lot of places, you know, manual brakes, drum brakes, bias ply tires. You know, there's all kinds of things to original restoration that, you know what, the car's not as fun to drive as your modern car. It's not gonna handle as well, brake as well. Now again, if you're talking about a restoration into a resto mod, at that point, yeah, you can make it perform like a classic, but you're better at another zero or two to that actual budget that you have for the car. So again, keep in mind, drive a classic Mustang, get behind the wheel, talk to friends, you know, make sure it's something you really wanna do before you invest all those resources into building one yourself.